hello my friends welcome to the channel and thank you for watching my match preview between brighton and chelsea football club at amex stadium well 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 this game is not gonna be an easy game my friend and i'll tell you why remember this picture here right <laughs> it was taken a few years ago that golasso from that brother that I can't pronounce his name, <laughs> he has to be against Chelsea. I don't know why every team score some golassos against Chelsea Football Club. It's embarrassing, man. That goal, that goal was the goal of the season. And uh, yeah, we saw the other day another golasso from Kevin De Bruyne. And uh, it's happening just over and over again. More Salah golassos. Daniel Star Starridge Colossus, <laughs> remember that? Uh, Sadio Mane, Nabil Keita. Man, people love to score Colossus against Chelsea Football Club. But anyways, guys, just to tell you that it's not going to be an easy game. And remember the last game? We drew 1-1 at the bridge the last minute in the stoppage time. <laughs> Danny Welbeck of old people. It had to be him, right? Oh my goodness, me. So, I have here some uh, few talking points or things to keep in mind before this game. Number one, potential banana skin because they have nothing to lose. So, they're going to give it all 100%. Number two, home advantage. They are playing home in front of their fans and we know how loud they can be. Number three, they always give us some hard time. I just said it, you know. Uh, every time, even when we beat them, it's going to be always a difficult, difficult game. And uh, yeah, this one is not going to be uh, different. Number four, recovery time for Chelsea Football Club. They had the entire week to prepare and we only had like 28 hours to prepare. Uh, and justice in the Premier League, the FA or whatever organization take making decisions is always against Chelsea Football Club. Look at uh, Arsenal. They got their game postponed. Every team so far got their games postponed but Chelsea Football Club. Number five, Graham Potter. Harry Potter himself is a magician. He's a tactician, very good one. We saw what he was able to do with Lampard and also with Thomas Tuchel. So we have to keep that in mind and be very, very careful. And on top of that, I can add even Marcos Alonso against Tariq Lamptey and Oh my goodness. I don't want to get you depressed. I am just trying to make sense here. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, uh, yeah. Lord have mercy. <laughs> All right, guys. So, my best 11 to beat Brighton away <laughs> in goal. Kepa Arisa Balaga, back four. Yeah, let me repeat. Back four. I'll be four. I'll go four, three, three. Back four. Malang Sa. Uh, Rudiga. Thiago Silva. And Dev Aspiliqueta. In the midfield, I'll go with Engolo Kante, Sao Niguez, and Jorginho. Front three. I'll go with Kalium Hassan Adoy, Romelu Lukaku, and Hakim Ziyech. Hey, 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 hold on, hold on. Somebody is getting his gun already to shoot me because of the, the front three here. In the defense, nobody is going to complain about the defense because we don't have anybody. Chaluba still injured. Uh, we also have Andreas Christensen with the virus. Who else is going to play in the defense? And please stop playing with wing backs when you don't have any wing back in the team. You only have Marco Salonzo, who we know is a disaster when it comes to uh, to teams that will attack us. Okay? Brighton are not going to sit back. And that is the wrong game for Marco Salonzo. And 
everybody knows about it. Kennedy just came back to London two days ago. I think he probably has only two training sessions. He was already in uh, on vac on vacation because in Brazil they're still on vacation. The season hasn't started yet, so he's not much fit. So forget about it. Unless if there is something, I don't know, something crazy that's happened to see Kennedy play. And then midfield, don't tell me that Saul Niguez is such and such. Just, just keep it for yourself, man. Saul Niguez is getting better and better every single day. Everybody knows about it. Front three is where people are going to shoot me and kill me here. Because Lukaku was awful. Also, Hakim Ziyech and uh, Kalim Hasunadoy, they were very poor against Man City. But let me tell you what. It's not because you were poor in one game that you're going to be poor in every game. Um, Hakim Ziyech, for example, being our best player for the last, I don't know, four games or so. So all of a sudden, just because he, he had a bad game against City, and all of a sudden, people want to see somebody else. Come on, people. This is football we're talking about here. This is not like a football manager or FIFA or some kind of video games here. Somebody can have an off day or the, op the opposition can make you look average. City makes everybody look average. They didn't allow us even time on the ball. Lukaku missed few opportunities. Um... Hakim Ziyech, you know, he also had a, a poor game, but Man City made us look poor. Has nothing to do with the quality of the player. The setup also, the way we set up against City, it didn't work out and the manager refused to, to do the right thing, which is to beat the pressure, you don't play tiki-taka, you kill the midfield, you jump the midfield, you throw some balls in the box, you give City what they don't want to have, and then let Lukaku deal with the situation in the box. But you will find few kids in the in the comment section that will insult you. You don't know anything about football. Why are you playing Hakim Ziyech? But last game, he was the first to say that Hakim Ziyech is back. He's the best in the world. So I don't understand what kind of football we are supporting nowadays. You know what I mean? Um, so... Everybody that you will put here, somebody is going to complain. Hakim Ziyech, I know I'm going to get a lot of sticks. And especially Lukaku. People want to see Harvard. People probably want to see uh, Werner. And people want to see Mason Mount. Mason Mount been very poor lately. Everybody knows about it. But just because the last game, uh, Hakim Ziyech and Lukaku didn't do good, all of a sudden... They are crap. They have to go. We need some, some, somebody else. We flip-flop every single week. It's a Chelsea thing. It's a new generation thing. So I'm not going to pay attention to that. Feel free to give me your formation and your starting 11. If you think like 3-4-3 three, three or whatever, whatever formation or 10-10-10, 11-11-11 is your formation, just put it there. Let's just have a a discussion this is about uh, opinions you know so it is what it is people i still believe that we're gonna beat them okay 2-1 chelsea football club romelu lukaku is going to score you believe me or not because of he got uh, a lot of critics from the boss so i think he's gonna do everything in his power to win this game kalium hassan adoy people are gonna ask me oh kalium wah 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 we have Kalium Hasunadoi can cross the ball like nobody else with a lot of precision. Hakim Ziyech also, you know, can cross the ball properly to, to feed Romelu Lukaku. If you put Polisic here, Polisic doesn't know how to cross the ball properly. He's going to just run with the ball in the box. But crossing the ball, feeding Lukaku is Hasunadoi's business. It's the, magi the magician, Hakim Ziyech, we know how he can create magic out of nowhere. I'm not going to waste my time explaining to people because we are so reactionary. We flip-flop all the time depending on when we win or when we lose. 
so it's a Chelsea thing. Please leave your comment and let's keep the conversation going. Mm -hmm.